Welcome to the Mint Kitchen. I'm Amy, and today we are going to be canning up some balsamic onion jam and making homemade sourdough focaccia. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get our focaccia dough mixed up. I have a beautiful sourdough starter. It was about a year and a half old. It's been great. I really have enjoyed it. I used einkorn flour for it. We're going to take 100 grams of the starter. Next step, we are going to then be putting in 400 grams of water. I just think this will go so well with the onion jam. Next up is some salt. We have 12 grams of salt going in. I just love the flavor of focaccia. There's so much that it offers. It's one of my favorite bread dishes. Give that a nice stir. Next up is 500 grams of flour. Again, I'm using einkorn flour. And look, I'm wearing an apron today. Still means we're gonna get messy though. Let's move it a little closer. So we're looking for 500 grams. Now with the einkorn flour, it doesn't get as like bubbly and you know, luscious like the like a typical whole you know flour, a whole glutinous sort of flour, I would say. So that's the one difference I would say with the einkorn is the glute. You know, it, it is more gluten um, removed. It is an ancient grain, and so that's just something to keep in mind when it comes to using einkorn flour. Is some things just are not what they are with white for all-purpose flour. We'll go ahead and give that a nice mix. And this will be ready tonight to go with some onion jam. So after a half hour, we're gonna do some stretch and folds for this. It's a pretty wet dough. And that's normal for focaccia, but even more normal with using einkorn flour. So we'll give it a nice mix. Make sure it's all nice and incorporated. It's still pretty wet, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour. It shouldn't be this wet. There we go, that seems better already. Yeah. That will be much easier to do our stretch and folds with a little bit extra structure to the dough than where it was just at. So just keep incorporating any of that loose flour in there. You can use your hands. Today I don't want to. I don't want to get too messy um, with the dough. So that looks pretty perfect to me. Maybe you probably could do a little, you know what, we're gonna do a little bit more flour. Just a tad just to really make that nice and incorporated. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now they're working together. And that's just the einkorn flour. This recipe I'm sure is fantastic if you're using all purpose, but that's kind of normal with einkorn flour. See that we'll actually be able to do some stretch and folds now. Okay, we're gonna put a lid on this, a cover. I have a nice cover for 30 minutes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. We are ready for our stretch and folds. So it's still pretty wet. I'm just gonna kind of like stretch it this way with a with a uh, spatula. But you can kind of see we're just gonna stretch it. Stretch it. Essentially what we're doing is we're building up the gluten. But then, you know, like we're building up the, the binding so it can stay together better. So we're building in some structure. 
kind of stretch it out. See, look at how that's already nicely stretching back. Like I said, einkorn flour can just be a little bit more challenging than traditional white flour. But it's still delicious. And we're, you know, my husband is gluten sensitive, and so this really has been nice to have the sourdough portion, and then also having the einkorn, which is a low gluten flour. So we're getting that, we're stretching it. Building that up, building that structure up. And we're just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing this for a bit. And then we're gonna put some olive oil in this dish and then cover it back up for anywhere for like four to eight hours. So it's kind of warm today. So probably should be closer to the four hours. Well, it'll be right around dinner time that we'll be able to enjoy this. And this is the bulk ferment. So do keep in mind that it will also for um, like ferment when it comes to the actual dish that we will be having the focaccia actually bake in. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So there, we're gonna just keep doing this, building up that structure. I'm gonna add in some olive oil and then it will be ready to transfer in about four hours to the baking dish. So I just put on some of the olive oil. You can see how already it just really transformed that dough. See how nice and shapely that is now? So the dough is nicely covered with the olive oil. We're gonna cover this back up for about four hours. Hello, this is Baking Kitchen. We are doing some bread. I have my little sous chef with me and we are going to get our focaccia into our oiled dish. Okay! <laughs> Starting right now. Picture. You were adorable. Okay. Now can I? So you do that, I'm gonna pour this in. Oh, so it's super wet still, it will turn out fine. I probably, the angrown flour I should have taken, I don't know, maybe 100 grams of water out of the recipe. So we're moving this to our baking dish now. It's gonna ferment for four more hours, so, ish. Four more hours? Ish. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit more olive oil on top, and he's gonna spread it around. Hello, this is Baking Kitchen, cooking some bread today. See you later. We're gonna put the cover on. Hello, this is Baking Kitchen. Mommy and me are baking. So, see you next time. Have a great show. Bye. So we are using the all new Ball Book of Canning and preservation, um, Preserving for the recipe. So we are making the balsamic onion jam, but we're making a quick little spin and we are adding some Jack Daniels. So this recipe calls for onions, balsamic vinegar, maple syrup, ground white pepper, which I had to purchase. I don't have white pepper on hand normally. Bay leaf, apple juice, pectin, and some sugar. I'm gonna be using some brown sugar. So I am making a slight modification, but they're all within the okay for this. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna be canning this today as well. This will go along perfectly with our focaccia bread. I also think for canning, this will be a really nice meal with some chicken, like you could marinate the chicken in this jam. So this really sounds versatile. The picture that they have looks so good. It's on top of a burger. So I think there's a lot of different options for this. And I'm excited to have this on my pantry shelf. So first up, we're gonna go ahead and dice our onions.
Okay, so they need to be diced. And I have my scale over here for us to determine um, how many pounds we, there's only four pounds. I have my Dutch oven going behind me. See how much this is. <laughs> Looks about to be a half pound, so we're going to keep chopping. It did say I bought a three pound bag, but I also realized that could be less based on, the, you know, taking the peels off, etc. Hmm, we're gonna need a lot of onions, I feel like. <laughs> I'm doubling the recipe, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, we have one pound of onions. We got three more to go. I'm gonna add this to the Dutch oven. I actually find onion cutting quite relaxing. I know there's other gadgets and devices that you can use, but this works for me. Okay, we got our next pound going in the Dutch oven. The third pound is going in. We got one more pound. And then the fourth cup. Onions can be very messy. <laughs> I had a very clean kitchen beforehand and now it's a little messy, not gonna lie. We'll give that a nice stir and we're gonna add all the rest of the ingredients. So this calls for a half a, sorry, one cup of balsamic vinegar for the recipe that we're doing. I'm going to do a half a cup then of the um, Jack, Jack Daniels. This Jack Daniels has been downstairs for quite some time. I think it's too strong for us. So I'm like, why not use it for cooking? One cup of balsamic vinegar. One cup of maple syrup. It already smells really good. <laughs> Three teaspoons of salt. Two bay leaves. Some white pepper. We'll give this a stir. It smells really nice. <laughs> I think that um, Jack Daniels also is giving it a nice scent, aroma, and I think the flavor will be really nice as well. We're going to heat this for about 15 minutes until the onions are pretty softened down. They're coming together really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting the next step prepared as these start finishing up. They smell heavenly so so good so the next step is in to add in the apple juice and the pectin this calls for four cups of apple juice which is this entire container we're then going to get it to a roaring boil we need six tablespoons of our pectin We're going to mix this in. Okay, 
and we're going to look for our roaring boils. I'm going to turn it up. This is awesome already. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> well, I would say we're officially at a roaring boil. We're now going to go ahead and add in our one cup of sugar. I'm using brown sugar. Okay, it says to continue this roaring boil for about a minute. Then we're gonna discard the bay leaves and start getting this into our jars. I do have my oven preheating for the focaccia bread as well. This is very easy. Okay, we have been boiling for one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and search for the bay leaves and discard them. They did their job. We have one more in here. Sometimes it's hard to find. Gotta be always on the hunt for your bay leaves. <laughs> Especially like in sauces, I've noticed that too. Oh, there it is. That was a hidden one. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and start getting this jarred up. We're gonna fill our jars. Our canner does hold 10 of the half pints and we need a fourth of an inch of headroom space. We have all the jams ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get our focaccia in the oven. We'll do our holes real quick. So I'm just gonna get those fingerprints in there. This is gonna bake for 25 minutes at 425. I'm gonna also put some flaky salt on top. Take some flaky salt. There we go. In the oven. Okay, guess what time it is. The bread's done. For some of these spots that I cut out the audio, I'm having great conversation with my son, so there's nothing wrong with your audio. Just keep that in mind. Make sure it's at 200. looks fantastic okay it's time to go ahead and get these in our water bath canner so this one holds 10 of them I think that looks good to me. So I have about an inch of water over there now. We're gonna go ahead and get our lid back on. This is gonna be on for 15 minutes. And for the water bath, we do not use the regulator. So we are good to go at that point. See you in 15 minutes. Okay, the timer has gone off. We're gonna go ahead and get these out of our canner. I'm super excited and hopefully they sealed nicely. I hope so and hope we have no issues. Okay, we're gonna take these out of the canner. What did it say? And get the other ones in the canner to finish up the canning process. Okay, we are done with our canning. Let's see if they all seal. So far, the last batch, all of them sealed. Which is awesome. So I'm just going to take these out 
And we are done canning. So there we have it. We made so many jars. I think we have 12 here of the caramelized onion jam, balsamic onion jam, and a homemade sourdough focaccia. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Look at this luscious focaccia bread. Looks so good. Okay, let's go to try. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. That is fantastic. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. You can taste a bit of the Jack Daniels in there too. Well, thanks for joining me in the kitchen today, in Mitten Kitchen. I had a lot of fun making the balsamic onion jam with you. And my favorite is the homemade sourdough with einkorn flour focaccia bread. Fantastic. They both went together so beautifully too. I hope this inspires you to get in the kitchen, give canning a try. I really appreciate the community that, that we're creating here and the Mending Kitchen. So if you did like this video, please give me a like. There are other videos that I have in my channel regarding canning. Thanks for watching the Mitten Kitchen, and I hope to see you next week. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.